Hello. We are Salt Shaker Games. I'm Sterling, and this is the rest of our team. Hung, Athena, Kate, Edward, and Richard. Yeah, if you're super observant there, you might have noticed that our name Shaker actually comes from the first letter of each of the first, or sorry, the first letter of our names combined. Um, the salt was just an add-on to spice things up. Really, we're not salty, though. <laughs> As for team roles, Edward and Richard were on server side and networking. Athena, Sterling, and myself were responsible for the graphics and animation. And Kate did all of our beautiful art and also implemented our sound system. In addition, all of the music you're about to hear is by our amazing friend, Andy Meza. <laughs> uh, As for the details of our project, um, over the past 10 weeks, we have created the game Chef Chefry's Restaurant Run. OK. Um, we're just getting set up here on the monitors, but um, we will take two volunteers from the audience. If you would like to play, please raise your hand. I think I see a volunteer there. And wait, we got two there. Which one raised their hand first? <laughs> OK, I, I think you raised your hand first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a brief description of our game. At its core, we have made a competitive action game where there's two uneven teams that are facing off against each other to complete various objectives. Um, one player, who is going to be Edward for this first round, is going to be taking control of Chef Sheffrey himself, who has just finished a birthday cake for his very best friend, Jeffrey. And the other three will be playing as a pack of animals who have caught the scent of some yummy food and want to take it for themselves. Chef Sheffrey has his restaurant locked down while he tries to hunt down the thieves. So the three animals will be trying to search through boxes in order to uncover the keys they need to escape with the sweet treasure. And the chef will be trying his best to catch each one of the animals and put them into cages so that he can kick them out of his restaurant. As we're getting set up here, um, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna see some cutscenes here that explain the rules of the game. These are the exits, the three different exits the animals can escape from, and the items they need to unlock those exits. Now our, our players this round are going to be our two volunteers, um, and Richard, playing as animals, and Edward, on the projector, playing as the chef. Um, Yeah, if you guys are all set up, I think we're ready to go. Yeah. Right away, as the chef, Edward is able to swing his net by pressing space, and if he manages to grab an animal in that swing, he can bring them over to a jail where they'll need to be released by one of their friends. While the animals team is getting their bearings here, I'd like to highlight all the great 3D modeling and texturing we have in this level. All of the object modeling was done in Maya from scratch by Kate. And the end result looks really great. great. <laughs> you'll also see that, um, yeah, uh, so the chef has captured an animal. And you'll see chef admiring some paintings here. <laughs> There goes another animal, and they're in jail now. You also see that the chef is fairly night blind, but as he gets angrier and angrier, represented by the bar on the right, he gets faster, becomes able to see more in the dark, and if the meter ever reaches the top, he'll instantly teleport the animals into the cage if he can catch them. To even the scales a little bit, the chef will receive a small pulse in the bottom left to indicate where the animals are on the map which can help him locate them within his maze of a restaurant. <laughs> now, that was a confusion power-up. Uh, one of the animals used an item that causes the chef to move in the opposite direction that he means to. Uh, you'll, yeah. Um, so you'll notice that um, there are some other power-ups that the uh, animals can use. They have different effects. Some of them affect the chef, like you've seen before. Um, we'll get into that more when we move into the animal's perspective, but uh, what's happening there is that animals are grabbing power-ups from around the kitchen by searching boxes, and they're affecting Sheffrey. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> now what's happening there is uh, Edward's hitting V to move into third person view. It's a little feature we added to show off all the cool scenery. Um, but most of the time the game will lock the camera into this isometric overhead angle you're seeing most of the time. So yeah, um, in the top left corner, you can see that two of the animals are caught right now, and everybody that can see them on the map, um, one of them is stuck in the middle top, and one of them is stuck in the... Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, we'd, we'd like to call um, Professor Volker himself <laughs> to play the chef, if, if he wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah, whenever you're ready. Okay, so getting right into it, Edward's going to be playing our cat this time. Um, all of the animals have to search these boxes. They can find one of two things when they open the boxes, um, either a key, which Edward just found there, which he has to take to the top right of the map, or they'll find power-ups as well. Um, <laughs> if Edward wouldn't get caught right away, we'd be able to show more of them off. <laughs> okay, now that Edward is caught, um, the chef will have to drop him off into a jail. Yeah, and right now Edward can't really do anything, but he can see all of his teammates running around the map by pressing space. And himself. So, if someone can make his way over there and sort of mash space on jail, they'll be able to break Edward back out. The banana that that dog is carrying right now... <laughs> The banana that that dog is carrying right now allows them to teleport through a wall. Um, and the other two bananas also allow you to speed up massively or open up some boxes instantly. Okay, the raccoon is not captured. <laughs> but Edward's out, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, getting into a few of our technical aspects, um, all of the rendering that we did was using the OpenGL library. Um, we're using GLFW to render or to display the window and handle all of our inputs. Um, on our server side. We are doing raw sockets connected to the server there on the end that we set up before the show. Um, and stir, uh, Richard and Edward set up a um, in-house encoding and decoding scheme that we're using to send information from the server to the clients. Um, additionally, we use Maya for all the modeling and skeletons. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, for this game, we were trying to scope pretty small. Um, I think we did succeed in that, and because of that, we were able to, to add a lot of extra things um, throughout the course of the game. Uh, when we started, it was just sort of a cops and robbers style game, where the animals were just grabbing keys and the chef was able to catch them and shove them into jails. But a lot of the power-ups and even that dash that you're seeing Edward use in the bottom right um, we're developed sort of in the last couple of weeks when we had a little bit of extra time due to um, scoping small and being able to get a minimum viable product out faster. Somewhere. Okay. <laughs> okay. We have a bit of extra time, so Edward's just going to show off some of the Easter eggs that we put into the game. Um, 
there are two big ones, and they give you small little boosts in the game. <laughs> Our server crashed. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, our biggest challenge, uh, honestly? Animation. Animation, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Athena and I worked pretty hard uh, over the past four weeks, going into last week, um, getting the animations to load. And we eventually got even the tails of the cats and the dog and the raccoon to load. Okay, now that we're in game though, um, we're gonna show off a couple of Easter eggs. So. Edward's been showing off a bunch of the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's our first one. That's a tribute to all the 167 students who struggled to get their models to, dis to, to render. <laughs> yeah, the other one, um, Edward's been showing off a bunch of the f paintings that we have across the map. Um, they basically just have us and uh, our friends in the game. But there's one painting just under this ramp that has a bear, a friendly bear. <laughs> and if you grab it, even as the chef, um, you'll see that the particle effects turn into <laughs> bears, and they become just a little bit faster. <laughs> uh, so you'll see the chef's vision radius increasing as he gets angrier. Um, there's a nice picture of Professor Volker. <laughs> All the all the paintings in this entire map are, are of us or our friends. <laughs> yeah. Because of our small scope, we were also able to add a lot of cool features that um, we didn't think we were able to get to. Um, in the bottom left, you'll see a mini map that Sterling was able to implement um, just in the last couple of weeks. Um, all of the UI art was done by Kate as well as the modeling. Which you did a great job programming that, that UI. <laughs> um, Richard and Edward put in a bunch of power ups just in the past couple. Well, even a couple of days. <laughs> and I think it turned out great. Um, that's pretty much it for the presentation. Did anybody have any questions about the development of the game? I just want to say it's been a fantastic experience working with this team. These people are amazing. All right. <laughs> Yeah. What was your favorite part? <laughs> I really liked, okay, I really liked personally, since I was working in graphics, I really liked grabbing all of the models that I got from Kate and sort of messing with them in Maya to let them animate and move the way that I wanted them to. It's hard to pick a favorite part. It was nonstop fun. <laughs> um, currently, Edward is waiting for his instant kill mode, or sorry, instant capture mode. Uh, <laughs> now, watch that, that bar on the right. As it gets toward the top, um, that's maximum anger for the chef, and it gives the chef a lot of boosts. Um, for starters, if the chef catches someone, uh, they don't need to walk them over to a jail anymore. They, uh, the animal instantly teleports to the, to the jail, so... Um, they move a lot faster, and they can see much farther. How did you get animation for? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> so, um... The, the question is, how did we get animations to work? Yes. Um, Athena works very hard, long hours, um, to get animations to work, and was struggling against... We're using ASIM for our object loader, but Athena was actually able to parse the animation files directly to grab the transform from it. Um, <laughs> and at the end of all of that, um, we finally got animations to work. And even then, we had to do some extra steps to animate the joints of the ears and the tails. Um, it was quite a process. Yeah. On the code side, the animations, it's just lots and lots of linear algebra. Lots and lots of like, matrices. <laughs> oh my god, the box not stressed. 
hardest part to make the game. <laughs> mm. Gonna have to go back to animation on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we struggled really hard on animation. Um, but a lot of the back-end server code is really complicated, but Richard did a great job. And Richard and Edward did a great job putting it all together. Could you repeat the questions that people say? Yeah, can you repeat the questions? Oh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. What determines the chef anger level? It's, it's actually based on, it's a function of time. So as the game goes on, the animals have less and less chance to win because the chef is getting more powerful. It creates a sense of urgency. Ooh, how did we lay out the level and how is that stored? So um, we, we, have, uh, we had a strange approach to it. Um, we were too lazy to write an editor. So instead, we use an image editor and we have different color codes for things. And then we have a program that translates that into a map data file. Yeah. How did we test the game? We brought in our friends and had them beta test. Um, a big thank you to all our friends, including um, Bill Goon and Andy and Ian and Sarah, Ian and, Sarah and well, and so many others. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? Uh, could you speak up? How balanced did we find the game was? Yeah, um, at first we found that the chef was always winning, so we had to nerf the chef a little bit. Um, <laughs> it, it's been tiny little tweaks to, to uh, get that a little more balanced out. Um, we find that the animal role takes a little more skill, but um, uh, we think we've addressed that with balance fixes. It's balanced pretty well, but Edward tends to win. <laughs> <laughs> Any, uh, any final questions? All right, let's thank group one.